can't wait for getting Starting off this week's news, two big mainstream science news stories. First up, SpaceX's Dragon 2 capsule successfully docked to the ISS in preparation for crewed missions to the station later on this year. This will be the first time in a while that NASA has launched from home soil, instead of using Russian Soyuz launch vehicles. However, according to SpaceX, the toughest challenge is yet to come, re-entry. The launch escape boosters on the side of the capsule that were originally designed for landing without parachutes could cause the capsule to heat up in specific places, or even spiral out of control. Fingers crossed, as if all goes well, the Falcon 9 should be taking astronauts to the ISS by the end of the summer. In other news, a cancer patient in the UK has been reported to be seemingly free of HIV after a stem cell transplant for his cancer, in the second case of this to be documented. While doctors say that it is too early to say if he has been totally cured, it could help experts who are trying to find a cure. However, similar treatment cannot be transferred straight onto HIV patients as current treatments work relatively well to keep the virus sedated enough for people who live longer and healthier lives. In addition, the treatment was a particularly aggressive type of treatment for cancer and the risk would be not suited to HIV. To start off the paleontology news this week, there's another Tyrannosaur paper, this time examining bite marks left on a tail vertebra of a hadrosaurid dinosaur. Coming from the famous Hell Creek formation of Montana, the bite marks identified on the bone have been matched up with the dentition of T-Rex fossils at various growth stages, revealing that a late stage juvenile between 11 and 12 years old had been feeding on this hadrosaur. This discovery shows that younger tyrannosaurs were already feeding from the same large-bodied food sources as adults, even though they did not yet possess their bone-crushing ability. And the study also suggests that more research into tyrannosaur bite forces at various growth stages could reveal some interesting data on how these animals' ecology changed as they grew. Some very exciting news next, as a piece of skull belonging to a Denisovan has been found. These elusive hominins, a sister group of Neanderthals, were previously only known from finger and teeth fossils belonging to just four different individuals, but now these fragments of a parietal bone represent a fifth. All of the fossils of Denisovans have so far been found in a single cave in Siberia, but it's thought that these hominins once existed all across Asia. The work reporting the skull piece is currently unpublished, but it will be discussed at the upcoming meeting of the American Association of Physical Anthropologists. Thank you very much for listening to this week's 7 Days of Science. I do hope you enjoyed it. If you did and you're not already subscribed, feel free to do so to learn more about the wonderful life around you. And if you do, we'll see you on Sunday.